guitar. Thank you very much, everybody. And I must admit, I didn't know that they were going to turn the house lights up, so I was standing right over here because I thought if it's dark, I'd be falling all over everybody as I got up here. But uh, thank you so much for being here. We got to Friday night. Give yourselves a hand. We got to Friday night. We're going to have some fun tonight. And, uh, you know, because you got to get out. You got to have a little fun every once in a while and, and laugh and have some fun. And, and I must admit, I'm going to steal a line from the headliner, Mark Porter, who's a good buddy of mine. And, you know, you got to go out. You got to have some fun because, you know what? None of us are going to make it out of here alive. So, you know, we got to have some fun. But sometimes life gets in the way of our best laid plans, right? We want to go out and have a good time, but all of a sudden life starts taking us on these crazy journeys. Has anybody's life here gone exactly the way you planned? Anybody? If you raise your hand or you say anything, you're lying. But uh, my life certainly hasn't. I, I grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. I was crazy about sports. We got some Kansas City folks out here right on. You betcha. Now, I was crazy about sports, and by the time I was a senior in high school, I was pretty good at sports. I was a three-sport high school All-American. I was a quarterback in football, point guard in basketball, center fielder in baseball. I had, uh, in February of 1976, I signed a letter of intent to play football and baseball at the University of Missouri. So I'm just kind of living my athletic dreams. And then I suffered this freak accident in the high school basketball game. I got poked in the eye, crashed to the floor, fractured my skull, broke all the bones in my middle ear that control your equilibrium and depth perception, and I'm deaf in my left ear from the accident. So my athletic career was over from this freak poke in the eye. So in September of 1976, I go off to the University of Missouri, and I made a strategic decision. If I can't be the best athlete, I'm gonna be the best partier. <laughs> and I gave it the good old college try, I promise you that much. That's where I met Cordis. And that's where I pickled my liver. And I, I just really, I just dragged my way through college and some miracle happened. And four years later, I graduate and all my buddies are going into sales and people said, Macintosh, you can sell ice to the Eskimos. So I went into sales and had a series of dead end sales jobs. And I ended up right here in Denver, Colorado, December of 1983. And actually I was working right up the street here on Quebec. And I just, terrible job, and I'm feeling sorry for myself. And I was just lying on the couch, and I was watching Ron Zappolo. You all know who Ron Zappolo is, right? He used to do sports, now he does news. I was watching Ron do a live shot in the Broncos locker room, John Elway's rookie year. And I just had an epiphany. I want to be a sportscaster like Ron Zappolo. So I went back to the University of Missouri, got my master's in journalism, and began my sportscasting career. Now, while I was in school, I met a lady who's also in the television business. We fell in love, we got married, we had a child who is now our 22-year-old son. But after eight years, that marriage ended in painful divorce. Short while later, I met another lady, we fell in love, we got married, we had a child who is now our 15-year-old teenage daughter. Now I've been a 15-year-old boy. I've been the father of a 15-year-old boy. But I've never been the father of a 15-year-old girl. And this is a whole new trip. And I tell you, I welcome any suggestions other than it's going to get worse. <laughs> I need some new ideas here. But after five years, that marriage to her mommy ends in painful divorce. I got a lot of smart aleck buddies out there that say, McIntosh, do you realize the only female who hasn't walked out on you is your cat? I said, yeah, I know that. And after that second divorce, I also was sitting there going, okay, what's that old saying? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So I started reading all these self-help books. One of them was John Gray's Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. You all familiar with that book? Anybody here read that book? Well, you know, it's, he talks about in this situation, this is how the guy thinks and this is how the woman thinks. And I'm sitting there reading this book and I'm going, well, no wonder I'm so damn confused. Where he's telling me I'm supposed to be thinking like a guy, I'm thinking more like a woman. I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. <laughs> oh, it gets worse. It gets worse. A couple of years ago, I used to host a show called Colorado and Company on Channel 9. Anybody ever watch that show? You know, we had this lady on that show. She's like a women's expert. Christiane Northup was her name. So she was in town selling a book and getting ready to speak and all this kind of stuff. So we had her on the show and it was a fun interview. And she was, we got done with the interview and she's walking off the set. And all of a sudden she just stops dead in her tracks. She turns around and she goes, Mark, are you left-handed by chance? I said, yeah. 
She goes, do you kick with your left foot? I said, yeah. And I go, why? She goes, I knew it. She goes, Mark, I have been interviewed by thousands of men. And you are without question the most empathetic man who has ever interviewed me. And that's characteristic of guys who throw with their left hand and kick with their left foot. You think as much like a woman as you do a man. I was like, oh my God, maybe it is true. I'm, I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. But hey, I play golf right-handed. Shouldn't that qualify me for a man card? Please say yes. Please say yes. Yes, thank you. I need more yeses. No. Ooh. <laughs> Conflicted still. If I've learned nothing else in 54 years on this planet, it's this. Life rarely goes the way we plan, right? And so I think the, the key is that we got to learn to try to turn life's lemons the heck with lemonade into sweet and savory margaritas. Drink to that, won't you? You betcha. We gotta turn life's experiences, we gotta be students of those experiences and not victims, because I think quite often, once the dust settles and the pain subsides, I think we realize that change brings things into our lives worth keeping no matter what. Two ladies, two ex-wives have departed, but it opened the door for the love of my life, my girlfriend for the last eight years, Kathy Gans. She's my soulmate. She's perfect for me. Well, maybe she has one slight flaw. She snores. I, 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 excuse me, she purrs. I'm sorry, she purrs. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Because on those nights when maybe she's purring a little loud, like maybe 76,000 Bronco fans watching them defeat the Pittsburgh Steelers, or maybe she's purring as loud as a 747 landing at DIA, I just put my good ear to the pillow, and I'm out like a light. Deaf in one ear, I'll keep it. We got to keep a healthy attitude toward change. Everybody out there that thinks that's a good idea, say yes. All right, the second thing we gotta do in turning life's lemons a heck with lemonade into sweet and savory margaritas is, man, despite the fact that life's kinda kicking you around, we gotta keep reaching out and doing good things for each other. You know, that old law of circulation, the more good we do, it comes bouncing back at us, right? Yeah. I had a great reminder of that. Last winter, I was back in Kansas City, my hometown. I was getting ready to speak on a Saturday morning. I was supposed to be on at 10 o'clock. Kathy was with me. We're staying at a hotel down on the plaza. I wake up early, so I woke up about six o'clock. Kathy's lying next to me. I'm kind of like, hmm. Then I realize she's not really a morning person. I have no social redeeming value for my girlfriend at six o'clock in the morning, so I knew that was out of the picture. Then I thought, oh, I'll go get a workout in at the gym. I'm a big believer in a sweat a day keeps the doctor away. And I remember, ah, there's no gym at the hotel. Now what am I gonna do? Oh, that's right. There's a Starbucks about three blocks from the hotel. So I thought I'll go down there and get a cup of coffee, read the paper and kind of see what happens. So I said, hey, sweetie, I'm gonna go down and get a cup of coffee. She goes, okay, bring me back a coffee and some pastry. I said, okay. So I threw on a sweatshirt and I'm walking through the lobby of the hotel. And I could tell that the doorman was looking at me kind of funny. And finally he says, where are you going dressed like that? I said, well, I'm just going down to the Starbucks. Do you want a cup of coffee? He goes, sure, man, but you don't have enough clothes on. I went, oh, don't you worry about me. I grew up here. I'm an athlete. I can handle this. I walk outside. Boom. Midwestern winter wind hit me. The wind chill was like 35 below. So I was like sprinting. Sprinting as fast as I could to the Starbucks. I get inside the Starbucks, and I'm sitting there. I'm going, okay, what the hell am I going to do now? There's no way I can sprint back to the hotel Tray, carrying a tray of coffee and pastries, and there's no way I'm gonna walk back, it's just too damn cold. I'm wondering what I'm gonna do, and then a brilliant idea hit me. I'll call a cab for a three block walk. So I reached into my pocket for my cell phone. I left it in the room. All right, smarty pants, what you gonna do now? 6.15 on a Saturday morning, there's only two or three other people in this Starbucks, and none of them look remotely interested in my dilemma. I have no idea what I'm gonna do. And then suddenly somebody taps me on the shoulder. I turn around and this guy says, are you Mark McIntosh? I said, well, yes I am. He goes, Robert Thompson, I grew up in Denver, used to watch you all the time on TV. 
Then I went to see you, and I'm a big Buffs fan. And a couple of years ago, I was out at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena getting ready to watch the Buffs play the UCLA Bruins. I was walking around outside the stadium looking for a ticket. You walked up to me and gave me a press pass. I got to watch the game from the press box. It was unbelievable, and I haven't had a chance to say thank you. <laughs> oh, what the heck are you doing in Kansas City? He goes, I just moved here last week. I said, oh, you live down on the plaza? He goes, no, I live out in Blue Springs. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Blue Springs to Kansas City is like Louisville to Denver. I said, what the heck are you doing down on the plaza at 615 on a Saturday morning? He goes, I just stopped in here to get a cup of coffee before meeting my girlfriend for breakfast. What are the odds? Just when I needed somebody, it was like an angel tapped me on the shoulder. So I said, hey, Robert, you want to show me how grateful you are? Give me a ride back to my hotel. And he did. And as I got out of that car and I handed that cup of coffee to the doorman, and then I marched upstairs and handed that cup of coffee and that pastry to my darling girlfriend. It was just resonating inside of me to never grow weary of doing good things for others. And that's what we gotta do, right? Let's never grow weary of doing good things for others. All those in favor, say yes! Yeah. All right. The third thing we gotta do to turn life's lemons, the heck with lemonade in the sweet and savory margaritas, is to fight the fact that you know, life kicks us around and we start losing our confidence and say, I can't do that. We got to keep putting fear and self-doubt aside and allowing courage and wonderment to win. Anybody remember that Super Bowl between the Broncos and the San Francisco 49ers? What was the score of that game? 55-10. I tell you, all the knuckleheads, whenever I speak, Whenever you ask them to score that game, boom, 55 to 10. But if I were to ask you, when is your anniversary? <laughs> when is your darling significant other's birthday? February 10th. He had to think about it. But everybody else is 55 to 10. Anyway, back then I was a sportscaster at Channel 4. We hosted the, uh, we were the Bronco station, and so we're getting ready for a live Super Bowl edition of the Dan Reeves Show. So it was the day of the show. I was working on getting ready, final preparations, but I skipped across the street from the team hotel to this restaurant to have some lunch. So I'm sitting there woofing down my food. I look up and across the restaurant, I see former Chicago Bear, Hall of Famer, current ESPN commentator, Mike Ditka. Now my first inclination was, oh no, I'm not gonna bug him, all that kind of stuff. But then I said, what the hell, man, I'm gonna go for it. So I went over to Ditka's table and I said, excuse me, coach. Mark McIntosh, I work at Channel 4 in Denver. Nice to meet you, buddy. You look just like Mike Ditka, by the way. <laughs> Mark McIntosh, I work for Channel 4 in Denver, and we host Dan's Coaches Show, and tonight across the street at the Team Hotel, we're doing a live Super Bowl edition of Dan's show. And I tell you, I know he's really nervous about this game, and I know you guys are good buddies, and so I think it might be cool if you came on the show, you might loosen him up a little bit. Now keep in mind, I hadn't checked with my producer. I hadn't checked the threes. I had no idea whether or not this would work out. But you know what? Sometimes in life, we just got to go for it, right? And so I was going for it. And Dick is sitting there looking at me going, where the hell did this guy come from? <laughs> Finally, he says, all right, McIntosh, I'm in. Give me the details. Well, I wasn't going to tell him. I don't know any details. I said, give me your phone number, and I'll get the details. So he gives me his phone number. I go back across the street to the hotel. I tell them what we're doing. They say, let's go for it. So I call Dick back. I say, hey, coach. I'll pick you up about 6.15. He goes, all right, you mind if I bring a buddy along? No, no problem at all. 6.15 sharp, I'm in the lobby at Ditka's hotel. Elevator doors open up. Out walks Ditka with fellow former Chicago Bear, Hall of Famer, current star of his own reality TV show, I think, Dick Butkus. And Butkus was carrying a case of Miller Lite. We had an interesting drive around New Orleans. You know what, I dropped back and I had gone for it. And Channel 4 had scored big time. So that's what we gotta do sometimes in life, we just gotta go for it, right? Yeah. All those in favor, say yes. Yeah. All right, I've been ranting and raving here about turning life's lemons, the heck with lemonade, into sweet and savory margaritas. And you might be saying, hey, you knucklehead, you don't turn lemons into margaritas, you turn limes into margaritas. Well, you know, I'm just a simple dude from Missouri. I've been called a lot of things in life. Smart's never been one of them. But here's the rest of the story. 
We go back to Colorado and Company. We had these two guys on the show. They had written a book called Honeymoon with My Brother. You ever heard of that show? Or excuse me, that book? They wrote this book called Honeymoon with My Brother. And it's the story of this one guy, Franz. He had dated this woman off and on for 10 years. For him, it was love at first sight. But for her, she was very career oriented and somewhat relationship phobic. And so they had broken up multiple times in the 10 years they had been dating. But finally, after 10 years, they're getting married. So they plan this lavish wedding. People are flying in from all over the world. Franz is finally getting married. Guess what happened the night before the wedding? She called it off. They broke up, what do you mean? She called it off. That's how it always happened, right? Not all the time, okay. She calls it off. Franz is devastated, but his younger brother, who was to be his best man, and a guy who wasn't a real big fan of this woman to begin with, says, you know what, the heck with her. We're gonna have a party tomorrow on what was supposed to be your wedding day to celebrate the first day of the rest of your life without that. <laughs> you said it, not me. So they have this lavish party, have a blast at the end of the night in an admitted inebriated state. The jilted groom looks at his younger brother and says, you know, I got these two tickets I was supposed to take to Costa Rica. What do you say you and me go? So the two brothers head off to Costa Rica, have a blast, end up quitting their jobs and traveling the world together for two years. So they wrote this book, Honeymoon with My Brother, and now they're sitting on the set of Colorado and Company telling us all these hilarious stories about the, all the wild stuff they did. And they were talking about they were at a book signing. They signed this book and they slid it across the table to this little old lady from Pasadena. She looks him in the eyes and says, Sonny, you didn't turn lemons into lemonade. You turned lemons into margaritas. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? What about us? Man, life doesn't always go the way we plan, but we gotta keep a healthy attitude toward change. We gotta keep doing good things for each other. And by golly, most importantly, let's put fear aside and allow wonderment to win. That's how we turn life's lemons, the heck with lemonade, into sweet and savory margaritas. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? Wouldn't have heard you anyway listening out of my deaf ear. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.